Hello and welcome to another video. I am actually going to do the sobriety video as you saw with the title. I did a little voting poll on my community tab. The winner is <laughs> sobriety on vacation. So that is the video I'm going to be doing this week. It's kind of fun actually to do that. I like to see what you guys would want and give you a little bit of the control over the content that I make for you. So that way it's stuff you wanna see or the majority at least. So thank you if you voted because that is very helpful for me. I'm going to talk about what it's like vacationing as somebody who is now sober. Uh, well, not now, I've been sober for quite some time. It's almost three years in August, the end of August, which is not far away from now. So <laughs> creeping up on me and it's really wild. Three years, feels good, I gotta tell you that. And no, my hair is not cut, I just pinned it up because I'm trialing to see if I want to cut my hair. I'm considering cutting it this length, but I would look like my mom, which isn't a bad thing. My mom is adorable, but you know, we don't wanna look exactly like our mother, right? I think a vlog would be kind of cool though. Okay, off topic. Let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing I wanted to say is this was really epic. When I got back from the trip and posted on YouTube that I wanted to know what you guys wanted to see, if you wanted to see sobriety on vacation video, I was like, I wonder how many days sober I am anyway. And it just so happened to be my 999th day of sobriety, 999. Those are angel numbers. I know actually a lot of my friends, that's their favorite number. One of my friends got married on 999. Let me just read a little bit about, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen this because I did a post on Instagram regarding um, just my thoughts on it. And I'll also put it up here. 999 is the completion of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. New opportunities and possibilities are on the horizon release old patterns, beliefs, and relationships that no longer serve you. Let go of the past and embrace new beginnings. This meant so much to me, and I'll tell you why. A major lesson I felt, I'm gonna cry, already, great. <laughs> One of the most amazing epiphanies and huge moments that I've been feeling in sobriety is that I'm completely content with myself. I, that's not to say that I don't have things about myself that I don't like or things that I think about that I've done and choices I've made in my life that I'm not happy about. One of them being drinking all the time. I already ran out of battery, can you believe it? So something really major that you start to realize once you start advocating for yourself and working on yourself is that you're really guarded about the people that you will now let in because you're doing the work and the flags start going off. I'm at the point right now where I'm just okay with being alone and doing the work because it's a lot. It's not saying that I don't wanna hang out with any of my friends. I'm just really selective about who I allow into my circle. I wanna make sure that their intention of being around me is good. Just make sure that the people around you are the right people because you're you're in a vulnerable state of working on all of these things, trying to figure out what it will, like for me, it's like, why did I drink like I did? Why did I escape? Why did I feel when I went out that I had to get so, you know, buzzed? So my angel number situation, the part that I was reading that I think is one of the biggest is releasing patterns and beliefs and relationships that no longer serve you. And that is huge and, and working on being a sober person. So anyway, let's talk about some tips on how I travel sober and some of the things that I find really useful. What I do is I will go on Instagram before I visit a town and just look for restaurants and places that I can go for food and drink that will have the phony Negronis that I love. I'm always searching for phony Negronis when I'm out on the road because that's just like my favorite drink and it tastes just like Campari and I loved Campari. That was the one of the last liqueurs or liquors or, or alcohols that I drink. And so I'm always looking for that when I'm out and about. Try to find a pub that has non-alcoholic beer selections so you can still enjoy something without breaking your truce with yourself that you aren't going to drink anymore. Making sure you have those options so you don't feel like you're missing out. I mean, every place that you go 
on the west coast pretty much are all very non-alcoholic friendly most restaurants will have options if they don't here's some drinks that i like if you don't have a non-alcoholic option just get yourself a soda water with a splash of crayon and a lime you can't go wrong with that. It's just refreshing and it's not a lot of sugary stuff. So you don't, you feel like you're drinking more of a spritzer. You can also ask a bar if they make mojitos to just make you a non-alcoholic mojito. It's all the ingredients of a mojito without the rum. Soda water with some maybe simple syrup if they have it. Lime or lemon muddled into it, mint muddled into it. So it's pretty easy to get them to uh, figure that out at any sort of restaurant. Having those mixed drinks that aren't necessarily Sprite, Coke, Diet Pepsi. I mean, if you want to drink that, that's fine, but I had to stop doing all the sh really sugary sodas all the time after like six months into sobriety because it was becoming a new problem. Like, okay, great, now we've gotten rid of this other problem and now we've got this insane drinking junk sodas issue that we've got to figure out. So now it's just soda water with the tea that I make every day. Soda water, fruit tea, lemon, splash of homemade simple syrup, and that's my go-to cocktail at the end of every single day. Search on Instagram and make like, you know how you can make folders of places that you wanna go. Save them all in that folder. Follow the hashtag, whatever you're looking for, non-alcoholic in Oregon, non-alcoholic in California. Start following the hashtag. And if you see something in a place where you're going, save it, tab it, and then you will have something to refer to when you get to a hotel. I'll get in my hotel and look at all my tabs and then start mapping how far I am from all of them and whichever ones I'm close to are the ones I'm gonna to try to visit. People on Reddit are really great for answering a lot of questions with what's the best of this in this area. People are really thorough in answering those questions. So I find Reddit forums to be super helpful. Make it something that you get to benefit from it so that you don't feel like it's like a punishment. Going to bed early on vacation to me is a luxury. Staying out late is a waste of time. If you get to go to bed early, you get to get up early and you have the entire day. You have the whole morning to go get coffee and walk around and enjoy the weather. You have the whole day to go do everything and then in the evening, have your dinner and get to bed at a decent hour, get a good night's rest and you will have the best, most easygoing vacation ever as opposed to how I used to do it where I would get wasted, stay up late and sleep in and then wake up fearing, feeling horrible. And then my whole morning was ruined because I'm now hungover and not feeling like doing much. And then I'm like, ugh, I don't even wanna go out and do anything today. So just really embrace that because I definitely do. I do not take that for granted. I'm so grateful that sobriety allows me to get the full experience of my trip. say avoid nightlife places. I personally am not a fan of going to bars. I find drunk people now to be incredibly annoying. When I first quit when I was a bartender, it didn't bug me because I was in my life and it was my lifestyle. It did a little bit, I guess, but I, for the most part, was like, eh, it's just part of what this is. But now that I'm so far removed from it that I really don't like to be in bars at all. Like it's, it's bizarre for me. It's a weird feeling <laughs> to be like, Ah, like everyone's so drunk. I just don't go to triggering places that make me feel anxiety, which would be a really busy, crazy bar. And we have friends that drink that don't even like going to those places either. Speaking of which, it is gonna be important to just communicate or remind any friends and family that you're with that you're still sober <laughs> because sometimes people just totally space it and forget, especially if they've known you for a really long time. A lot of times people just default to habits of things that you've done in the past, like where you go and what you do. So just remind them, you know, hey, just, just so you know, like I'm sober, so I'm not gonna to wanna to like go to the same types of places that we usually do. But anybody who's really close to you, friends and family wise, has been through it with you. They've seen you at your worst. <laughs> they know exactly how much you struggled with drinking. They've seen it, they've heard it, they've had the stories, they've had the late night calls. They've probably seen you cry a bunch because 
if you're getting towards the end of the desperation of sobriety that makes you feel so horrible, you've probably had some nights where you're really upset because you've let yourself down. That's just how, I mean, that's where I was. I was at a point where I was so disappointed in it that it would make me sad. I would get really depressed the next day. My, hang my hangovers were usually very sad hangovers. They've been there through that with you and they know more than ever. And if they truly love you, they're gonna want what's best for you. They're gonna probably help and knowing what to avoid because they're gonna know you're sober and they're gonna think about that. And that's somebody who truly cares for you and is on your team. Nobody cares that you don't drink. I mean, if you have a friend that's giving you shit about it, that's not a friend. And anyone else, the wait staff, the bar people, anyone, anybody, <laughs> Anybody, anywhere is not gonna care that you're not drinking. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to make excuses. You don't even have to tell people you're not drinking if you don't want to. You can just choose to not drink and it's nobody's business. So if you're like, gosh, man, I would go on that trip, but everyone's gonna be drinking and I'm not. Unless it's like if you're going to some event that is specifically about alcohol, you know, like if it's a champagne toast, big champagne party, we're having a huge champagne mimosa party. Even then I would think that they'd have NA options because nowadays people just know that there's people who don't like alcohol or are sober. I would make excuses in my head that people cared and make this whole narrative in my head. I should, I don't wanna go because I don't wanna be a bummer. I don't want people to not like have me standing there not drinking, Nobody, nobody's paying attention. Everybody is on their own plane and their own planet just doing their life and they're not paying attention to you. Nobody's paying attention to you. The world does not revolve around you so nobody cares. <laughs> I just wanna say that because I needed to hear that. <laughs> The other thing too that I find to be really strange is that maybe because I've bubbled myself so hard when you, there's like some memes that going around of people saying that I've protected my peace so well that I'm alone. <laughs> I get that. I don't want to be alone though. I don't want to be alone all the time, but I haven't been around anybody that's been extremely visibly drunk since I've quit. So in three years, I've not seen a drunk person, maybe out on the road. Like I've actually, when we were in Sacramento, we, we were sitting across from a bar while we were having some dinner. A guy walked out of the bar so drunk and he started to zigzag and he fell over into a tree in a bush. You know, I hadn't seen that in so long and I, being somebody who worked in a bar for 15 years, I saw many, several drunk people per night. So it was nothing to see a drunk person, but it was like weird <laughs> to see it because I don't see drunk people anymore. It's just something that I've noticed. So I've done a really good job of choosing where I go to be places that you wouldn't run into that because seeing it is can be triggering if you're still newly sober or it's just not really um, an environment you're gonna wanna be in, you know? Bring or buy your own non-alcoholic for the trip. We would go into grocery stores and grab some like non-alcoholic Stella's or we would grab you know, soda waters or drinks, whatever we needed to be happy, to be able to have a little trip and feel like we've got ourselves a little something exciting to have in the evenings with dinner. Bring it to the hotel, stock your fridge with it, and that way you have it and you're having a good old time. It is fun. It's fun to have it. And you know, when you're hanging out with people outside, say you're going camping, everybody's sitting outside and drinking, having a drink in the evenings and you're doing s'mores and you're chatting, just bring a non-alcoholic beer. You feel like you're not missing and you're not even focused on it, but at least you have it in your hand. It's just kind of like that ritual that you're used to. If you're feeling a little bit like you're missing it, like say you're out and everyone else is having stuff and drinks and you're not and you miss it, I'll do stuff like post on Instagram how stoked I am that I'm sober. I just do things that like it helps me because it keeps me in check and accountable. Keeping yourself accountable can be something as simple as putting it out there to your friends and your, your followers or whoever on your family, whoever supports you on your Instagram. Use those places as, as somewhere to put it out there into the universe that you're stoked that you're still sober and that you're, 
you know, find a motiva motivational meme or, or something on, from one of those sober accounts and share that on your story and it will just help keep you accountable. I find that to be really useful. So if you ever see me on Instagram posting about how stoked I am about sobriety, I might have had something remind me of my days of drinking and I'm just putting myself in check and just saying I'm still heading, I'm just still heading in this direction and I'm doing good. Check your app, check your number, look at it, post it, share it or just look at it and hold on to it for yourself if you're not somebody who likes to share stuff like that online. Uh, just look at it and remind yourself, you know, make it your screensaver so that you're able to continue to motivate yourself and not start to miss it and get FOMO. My last tip for sobriety on the road or in your travels is keeping your sober community close. If you have a group of people that you have grown, leaned on, whatever, reach out to them because anybody who's sober loves to be supportive to somebody else who might be newer to it, who's going through it. Keep those people close to you and, and think about them if you need to when you're having those moments of just like, crap, gosh, I think I wanna drink. Like, just remember, well, what would that person do? You know, you'd have to start your app over. That sucks. Don't do all that hard work and then watch it slip away. Even though I did. I mean, I, I had gone months sober and then I fell out off the wagon. I went out with friends and I had a glass of wine and I had to start my app over. over. I did that for five years. I said that in my last video that I did breaks. And then I'd be like thinking about events and things that were coming up that I knew I'd want to drink at. You know, holidays or... That was a tough one, holidays. We'll have to maybe do a holiday sobriety one. I might have to do that. I might have to do a little updated, you know, closer to the end of summer. I'll, I'll try to remember, or you guys remind me to do getting through the holiday sober video because those are probably the toughest times I felt to get through in the beginning. The first year was really hard. Uh, if you don't have a sober community, if you don't have people that you know are sober, look for these types of videos on YouTube and watch them and just get inspired from other people who are just super excited about being a sober person is all I can think of. Stay strong, you know, and just remember that who you're doing it for. Are you sober for yourself? Because that's the only way you're going to be able to successfully stay a sober person is to just do it for you. Do it for your mental health. Do it for your body and your internal organs and your future and old, the old version of yourself is going to thank you um, that you took better care of yourself when you were younger. All right, that's all I've got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Another sobriety video for me. Uh, please do subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notified. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. And please comment below if you have sober stories, just starting out, if you've been seasoned, whatever you got to share. I love, you have no idea, love reading your stories and hearing back from you guys about just this world that we're in and how you're feeling about not drinking in it. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Not